Hello and welcome to Out of the Fog. I'm Karen Hager. Each week at this time, we gather for spiritual conversation with enlightening guests, and I'm glad you're here. If you are curious about the adventures of Maisie the Puppy or what jigsaw puzzle I'm working on, oh, or, you know, what's happening here on Out of the Fog, <laughs> um, please follow Fog City Psychic on Instagram. And would you please rate and review this podcast wherever you're listening? It helps us reach more people. And I believe that this is a time when positive, generous ideas and energy are sorely needed. And you're part of that as you listen, as I listen, as we go out into the world and work together. So please be part of that light that we're putting out in the world. Now then, we know our kids are unique and wonderful, frustrating, always evolving beings. And as parents or as teachers or aunts or uncles, adults who care about the planet and what happens, how can we know what our children need to be healthier and to thrive in the world. Rates of anxiety and depression are rising in our kids and parents who are consciously awakening are looking for new tools. Well, Julie Hatch is my guest today and she's here to share her views on holistically raising kids from the inside out. Are you ready to meet her? Julie Phillips Hatch is a pediatric nurse practitioner, an acupuncturist, a parenting specialist, and a mom. She is a traditional Western medicine practitioner turned alternative holistic practitioners. Her passion's always been helping kids. She spent many years working in pediatrics, first in pediatric intensive care, then in neonatal intensive care. Eventually, her focus shifted, and she found her way into the realm of Eastern medicine and holistic health. Julie's new book is A Parenting Revolution for Higher Evolution. And you can find out more about Julie and her work at juliephillipshatch.com. Julie, welcome to Out of the Fog. Thank you, Karen. It's wonderful to be here. Thanks very much. Oh, I'm glad you're here. <laughs> what, what isn't working right now in, in the traditional way we raise our kids? Because you, you're talking about a revolution in parenting. What mm. needs to be overthrown? I think that what isn't working, um, which is partly evident from the rising continually, not even taking COVID into advance, but the continually um, rising rates of anxiety and depression, which I think is the first or a big indication that something isn't working. Mm -hmm. Um, And I think that a lot of it is, and it depends on the demographics you're talking about, what I see is that parents are putting a whole ton of pressure on their kids and they're putting pressure on their kids to succeed. And right, that right there is what is the definition of success for your child. It's not the same for all children. So we're putting a lot of um, pressure on our kids, which is causing them to be anxious. And I think a lot of times, innocently so, <laughs> parents try to make their kids into who they want them to be, or really even more who they who they think they should be, which is often defined by society's expectations, which is, which is okay, but not to the point where we um, no longer are unable to see what our child really needs and what our child is meant to do, not as what's supposed to do according to us in society. So we're trying to, I think we're just trying to fit them into a category um, a being that works for us and meets our expectations, but doesn't always work for the child. And that definitely brings on anxiety. How do we start to overcome that? I know in my own world, when my kids were in elementary school, we moved from the San Francisco Bay area to a suburban place here in Southeastern Michigan. And all that pressure that you're talking about was Mm. really apparent here. And I felt so much pressure from outside to change my parenting style, which had been pretty like far out, man, groovy unicorn style (laughs) when I was in California and I moved here and boy, these people do not play around. And, (laughs) and they start with their kids from a really early age. There's a lot of pressure on sports, organized team sports. There's a lot on achievement and what college you're going to go to. And my kids didn't fit that mold. Mm -hmm. How do we overcome the outside pressure to do it the old way, which doesn't work. Well, it takes a lot of strength and kudos to you for doing what you did, because that of what you talked about happened to you in in Michigan is exactly the kind of pressure that 
I'm talking about and um, doesn't always always fit. So it takes, well, it takes for one thing for the parent, um, and I use parent meaning caregiver, like you said, teacher, or grandparent, whoever it is, um, to really know themselves within and to know what is important to them and then transmit that on to your kids or express that to your kids or have it bring out in the way that you parent. What, and I think that I'm trying to put this all together, but I think that mindfulness comes in here and mindfulness being that we know um, where we're coming from and what is important to us and becoming mindful in who our child is at the core, their, their inner essence, and just keeping your eye focused, I think, on your child and what is best for them and not caving. And it's not, and it's not easy at all, um, but not caving to external influences and expectations. But you just need to have certainly a firm feeling from within of yourself and then a strong feeling of who your child is and what they need from you. Well, and transmitting those values. So my children are now adults. My kids are 19 and 22. I hope that I've noticed them being really strong about resisting outside influences, mm. about holding their own line. Here's who I am. Here's how it is. Here's the way I'm yeah. going to go. And I would hope that transmitting those kinds of values in, in our family, we do it this way, then helps the kids be stronger because so much of our adult life well, heck from, I don't know, maybe middle school on so much of our life is about deciding what mm. do I want to do? Do yep. I want to, do you know what I mean? Go with that mean person. Do I want to take that drug that's being offered? Do I want to make fun of somebody? We have to right. be able to make those choices and we mirror that then for our kids. Right. And so that is one of the key points is when you say that we mirror that for our kids is that what we I, I, I say model the way that we are and act and set, speak and our actions, everything our kids pick up on. And in those first, the first eight years of life, they are so, so, so impressionable. And they are the most important years in anybody's life in terms of who you develop into or how you develop. Um, so how we present ourselves, they pick up on, like I say, what we do, and what we say, but even what we don't do or what we don't say and the nonverbal communication and the energy, they pick up on all of that. So we want to, um, we can't be, you know, star parents and on our best 24 seven, but we want to be aware of what we're modeling for our kids. We're modeling anger or are we modeling tolerance or are we modeling anxiety or are we um, modeling um, compassion and adaptability. So what we model has a big difference in, um, in how they learn about life, how they learn that they're supposed to live because that's where they're only, where their biggest reference point, where their only reference point until they get out and meet, you know, other parents and teachers and other friends and things like that. We are all they know, and that's how they form, um, how, how they decide how to be in the world and what to do. And um, you also made mention about having the inner strength. And part of what this book is meant to do is try to help parents help kids to have that inner strength. Because if they're counting on the um, acceptability from their friends or from social media, or if they're looking outwards for um, their worth or their validation, that doesn't last very long and that disappears as quickly as that external influence disappears. Um, so the finding it from within, finding what what who they are from within, the their core, their essence, what makes them um, who they are and feel good about that and recognize it and listen to it as they get older, then that is what's going to get them through the hard times. That is what's going to build confidence and resilience and being able to say no to the drugs, if that's what they choose, if they can make a conscious decision, um, knowing full well what they on their inner, according to their inner selves want to do. So I'm just, I'm thinking about my kids' first eight years of life and I'm thinking of all the mistakes I made <laughs> and uh, just so much, we don't have time. It would be a 90 hour show. Uh, how do we as parents, cause it's so important, as you say, it's so important. How do we as parents talk to our kids about when we messed it up? Mm. 
when we did show anger and not tolerance? How do we talk to them about that? Um, it it depends. Well, it varies from child to child and it varies from developmental age to developmental age. But I think by and large, the best policy is to not unload on your child, but to explain, <laughs> gee, you know, mom messed up. I, I did this. I wish I had done that. And, and to be transparent, but again, not to unload and, <laughs> and, and, you know, express everything, dumping it on your child's lap. Like, oh, I screwed up. Mm-hmm. Um, but to, but to acknowledge it because nobody is a perfect parent. Um, nobody should be a perfect parent. And so to acknowledge it is part of life. And it teaches your child that, hey, you're not perfect. And you try to fix your mistakes or learn from your mistakes or do better next time or whatever it may be. But um, rather than faking it with them, if you sort of, if you let them know in a, in a moderate, gentle way, um, how you feel badly about messing something up, then, then I think that that's the best way to deal with it. Does that also help them? for when they mess up? Yes. Yep. Very good point. That's right. Forgiveness, forgive yourself. (laughs) Um, And if we, and if we show that to our kids and they can learn that if they make a mistake, it's not the end of the world. You pick yourself up and you learn from it and you carry on. Mm. And that also feeds into that. I know, especially with my younger son watching as everyone got ready to graduate from high school and the pressure that was on some of those kids to get into the right college, the right, Mm. there's a, um, I'm so proud of him because he, and this is maybe partly parenting, but honestly, I think it's about 98% his supreme excellence and and, and wisdom. Um, I'm so proud of the way he held his ground about the choices he was making Mm -hmm. and was there to listen to his friends who were talking about how they were terrified of making a mistake. They were scared they wouldn't get into the right school. They were scared their parents would be mad if they didn't, whatever it was, make the honor society or make the team or whatever it is. And there's a part of what I feel like is changing in the world is that there's so much division and disagreement. There's so much (laughs) arguing and hatred and all that just kerfuffle going on. Yep. That our kids as peacemakers, as listeners, as strategists, as way showers, our kids make the future. Yep. And so we can help give them gifts to, to do just that. That's exactly right. And so that is partly the um, part about the evolution, meaning that I would love to see it is it's certainly the future is in the hands of our kids. And so if we can see a more compassionate, selfless um generation come along, giving, com- open to communication, tolerant, which I think is is possible. Sometimes I think, oh my God, it's never possible. <laughs> but then I think, you know, there's a lot of kids in the in the up and coming generations that are are getting that message. And I would also add that you obviously did a lot. You may think that you messed up a lot, but you obviously did a great job that your son was able to be that way with his with his friends because that is that is what I picture the evolution of our future generations to be. Yeah, I think that your son emulates that. <laughs> mm. Well, oh, that made me go all tingly. Um, so <laughs> the, <laughs> thank you. Um, you're listening to Out of the Fog and we're talking with Julie Hatch. Her new book is A Parenting Revolution for Higher Evolution, Raising Resilient, Responsible, Compassionate Kids from the inside out. And you can find out more about Julie and her work. She's the host of the Mums on a Mission podcast. She's a parenting coach. There's tons of good stuff on her website. So go over to juliephillipshatch.com. That's Julie, J-U-L-I-E, Phillips, P-H-I-L-L-I-P-S, Hatch, H-A-T-C-H, juliephillipshatch.com. So one of the things I like about your book is how practical it is. So there's all this good spiritual wisdom, but the listeners know that I like the books that give me something to do where there's exercises where I can. So one of the things I really got into was that you have a way of using that uh, five element system to help you tap into your child's inner essence. And I wondered if you'd just spend a moment on that. I had so much fun with that. Can you Mm. share a little of that with us? Yes, I would love to, because that is the foundation that comes from my studies of um, acupuncture and Chinese medicine. So it 
comes from Eastern medicine. And it's just, it's the crux of so much. I just, I think it's such a great system. And um, Chinese medicine, as many Eastern medicines are <clears throat> based on nature, the world around us. Um, so in this particular, with the five elements in Chinese medicine, the elements are wood, fire, earth, metal, and water. And every child and every one of us falls under the category, one of those categories. There's usually, there's always a dominant element type. And then sometimes there can be a, a close second, which is a supporting element type. Mm -hmm. And what that element type tells you is their true nature, their inner essence, their spirit, who they are at the core. Um, I think I referred to it, I, I even referred to it as their soul <laughs> a mm -hmm. bit in the book, but it's their true nature. It's what drives them and enlivens them and what causes them much stress and, um, and anxiety and makes them not do well, makes them it's the opposite of motivating. So they have their motivators and um, things that their element is, is all about, which I can give you an example in a second. And then every element has a stressor or a, a challenge that makes life really difficult for the child when they're faced with this. So as an example, um, in, an earth child is um, a peacemaker. They are the diplomats. They love peace around them. They love being around family and friends and a lot of people. They don't like to be the center of attention, not at all, but they like to know that people are around them. And with that, they like, they don't like discord. So they like people to get along. Um, these kids are ones that like to sit in your lap and caress your face and they, they're touchy, touchy, feely, feely. They love the connection. They love human connection. Um, they're very loving, beautiful souls. But so, so what motivates them is having them be able to be around people. Again, not, not um, in a center of attention, really super active way, but just having people around. So they feel really comfortable when they're at home and their siblings and their parents are around. But so what stresses them is that if they don't have any family or friends around, if they are um, told to be by themselves for too long, that they don't have anybody, that they don't have anybody around them, nobody that they can touch and cuddle with and, mm -hmm. and talk with because that's what they need. So you take that away from them. But what if you take so that that is what stresses them is if they don't have that good stuff around them. So all of the element types have. Um, components to um, life, to living, that are that motivate them and make them feel really good, and then elements that stress them and make them feel really badly about themselves and about life. And so the idea is to nourish that good stuff, nourish their essence. Um, I don't know if an earth is a very good example for that, but so nourish, nourish what their essence is, um, try to help them deal with the more, the, with the challenges of their, of their element type, but really focus on their essence and, and nourishing it and celebrating it and say, this is my child, like it or not, whether you like it or not, if you have an earth child and that just is not what you don't identify with that, that doesn't really matter. <laughs> Mm. It is your child. And so you want to celebrate that and do the best you can with that element type. The other thing is that element types don't change. They, what you're born, you're born with it and you'll die with it. And um, the supporting the ones that come in a close second, perhaps may come into play more, more at certain times during life than others. But for the, for the most part, your dominant element type is what, what you, who you are, what you are forever. <laughs> And I, oh, that's so interesting to me. And it, it makes me think about, you know, there's that sort of style of parenting where your child becomes an extension of you. You were talking about that a little bit earlier mm -hmm. and an exercise like this, like the one in the book, looking at those five elements, looking at the characteristics and the stressors and the, the like um, advantages, the assets mm -hmm. really helps me see how my children aren't, aren't me couldn't yeah. be me, will not be me, <laughs> how just how different we are from each other, but in the best kind of way. Yeah. Yep. Absolutely. And, and likewise, um, if you have more than one child and you know that they're not all the same, so different kids need different, not different parenting styles. We kind of have our style, but they need different things from us, depending on, you know, what element type you are, what kind of child you are, they need different things from us. So to be aware, that's, that's also part of this whole thing is just awareness. Even if like I say, we're never the perfect parents, 
But if you can at least be aware of what you want to be doing, of what you want to be helping your child with, that's half the battle. (laughs) This is a time, there've been so many challenges with um, schooling, with the pandemic and lockdowns and schooling and all that kind of stuff. How can we help our kids be as resilient as possible and slash or resist the urge to do everything for them? I'm asking for a friend Mm. because I would never do this, but, um, but how can we, how can we help them be more resilient and not rescue them all the time? Well, rescuing them all the time is a killer for resilience and building confidence. It just, when you rescue them and you do everything with them, you, you, you don't allow them for one thing to know that they can deal with things on by themselves. They don't have to have mom and dad's help all the time. So that's a confidence builder, but yeah. So you don't even give them the opportunity to give it a try and different kids will react different ways, but some will just sit back and say, great, you know, I'll go through life and mom and dad will fix everything for me until they become an adult. And they realize that that's not what happens. That's not reality. And it's our job to prepare our kids for reality and to be able to go out in the world and live their own lives. So um, to build resilience, I believe, is to let your child, it's hard, it's really hard, but let your child fail, let them fall down and figure out how they can get back up. And they're really more resilient than we give them, than we give them credit for sometimes. Kids can, kids can bounce back up if we let them and if we give them the space to experience failure and hard times and the bumps in the road, because it's inevitable. Life is made up of bumps in the road. Um, So if we just make it all smooth, clear sailing for them, they learn nothing. They are completely ill-prepared for real life. And it definitely does. It's it's a resilience killer. It's a confidence killer. (laughs) Mm. Mm. Are some of this feels to me like it would be caught up in what our parents taught us about Mm. failure and success too, which might be why we're so quick sometimes to step in and try to in quotes, save our, our kids. So how do those, how does the way we were parented ourselves play into something, play into our understanding of how we should parent our kids today? Well, I think that it can go, um, obvious, certainly it is as much as I'll speak for myself, as much as I will say, ah, I sound like my mother. I don't want to sound like that. I don't want to say what she said. I don't want to do what she did, but inevitably it comes out. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Um, I think part of it is just, you can't help it, but you can also make, and I have made some, some parents do make a conscious decision to parent like they were parented because it went work really well and they were happy with it. Um, But also a lot say, I'm not going to do what my parents said, or in certain areas of life, I'm going to go the opposite way and I'm going to do it differently. So certainly it is a, I think it's an undeniable influence on our parenting, but we can make the conscious choice and decisions as to how much of that we want to incorporate in our own parenting and how much we don't want to. Mm. I'm going to ask a woo-woo, wacky woo-woo question. Yeah. Because you talk in the book about connecting with the inner spirit or the inner essence of a child. And that connection happens, yes, as we're making lunches and playing and doing bedtimes and baths and all those things that we're doing that we're in conflict or whatever it is, Mm -hmm. but it also happens energetically. And so I think my wacky question is when we as parents or guardians or aunts or uncles, when Mm -hmm. we come into a deeper knowledge of our own inner essence, How does that change our ability to energetically connect with our child? What happens when those two inner essences, always growing, always changing, what happens when those two inner essences connect? Um, I think that both inner essences and souls or whatever you want to call it are, um, I don't know, augmented isn't the right word, but they are helps to grow stronger and to um, have a deeper connection. And it's that deep connection that is what is so valuable in life. Um, Yeah, the connections of, well, that, that deeper connection is what feeds your own soul, feeds your child's soul. And it's the foundation of, of a 
that's success. <laughs> that's a foundation, I think, of real happiness and feeling really good about yourself and about life is a connection with somebody that you love like that, your child or your parent. And um, so allowing, learning how to, or, or it's not even learning how to, allowing the experience to happen just as a win-win situation for, for both parent and child. Mm. It seems to me it allows for that deeper kind of seeing and it mm-hmm. makes bath time. Yeah, it is sort of bath time on the surface and underneath something deeper is happening, right? We're, yeah. we're seeing each other. We're in a, in a close connection where it's beautiful. I wonder then for, for parents, because I, I feel like for most of us, we are often disconnected from our inner essence. Mm. What can parents do, Julie, to help us be know ourselves better so that we can know our kids better. Knowing ourselves better. And that really is where it starts. If we don't know ourselves and can't connect with our inner selves, then, then it's not, probably not going to work with our kids. So that is really the first and most important, well, the first step. And I think that, um, and this will this probably speak mostly personally, but also from what I've seen from other parents is that um, meditation can help having some time to just go within, listen to whatever's happening within in, it, you know, in and out of the chatter that your, that your brain is doing there mm-hmm. just to connect within and what's going on within you. Um, slow down. <laughs> we are racing from things. We're just doing so much. I think that more being and less doing, because we're always racing from one activity to the next. And I understand that's the reality of being a parent. Um, but you have, so you have to make a point to just slow down, stop, spending some time in nature is one sure way to tune out from the crazy, crazy world and tune into you. And that's a big one is to spend, spend some time in nature, both for your child and for you. Children do great when they um, get a lot of benefits from being in nature. So slowing down, turn off your phone for a day. <laughs> Wait, what? Uh, no, no. <laughs> disengage or as much as you can disengage from the world. And again, Time and time and nature is a great way to do that. So I just think that it's giving yourself time, breathing. As I, as I take a deep breath, as I say this, stop and breathe. Stop and smell the roses. Stop and give yourself a chance to um, be with yourself and and listen to what's going on in there. And it may be good, maybe bad, but it is what it is. And just just the fact that you stop and pay attention to what's going on within is is huge. Mm. Now, Julie, I know we're just about up at the end of our time. How can listeners connect with you? And you've got so much because you're a coach and you've got the podcast going. Uh, how can they work with you and find out more? Yes, if they go to um, my website, juliephillipshatch.com, there is, as you said, a lot of information there. There's also the opportunity to um, sign up for a free, if you want to just have a chat about what's going on with your child, um, a no obligation, a free chat. I love to chat with parents about their kids, um, about what's going on. And so it's a free 20, 30 minute consultation to talk with, um, to talk with me. So that's available, um, on the website as well, along with the book. And as you said, blogs, I post and, um, podcasts and things like that. So it's juliephillipshatch.com. I love it. What do you feel like is the most important thing you want to leave the listeners with? Yeah. Um, no pressure. <laughs> well, once parents can learn and allow themselves to consciously connect with their child and see their child for who they are and not what the parent wants, but really connect. And actually that makes parenting a whole lot easier. It's putting less of your agenda on them and just, just connect with what their not agenda is, but who they are meant to be and who they already are and accepting that. Once you've done that, then lighten up. <laughs> <laughs> Enjoy your days as a parent because they're, they go by really fast and we take it. Yes, it's a serious matter. It's the most important job in the world as far as uh, if you ask me, but if you, you can lighten up and follow your kids playing and laughter and just, you know, a little more hands off and just enjoying time with them rather than trying to make them <laughs> trying to manipulate the time and manipulate them into whatever you have in mind. Lighten, just lighten up and have a good time with it. <laughs> oh, oh, that's fantastic. Julie, thank you so much for talking to us. Thank you, Karen. It's a pleasure being here.
That is Julie Hatch. She is the author of A Parenting Revolution for Higher Evolution, Raising Resilient, Responsible, Compassionate Kids from the Inside Out. And you can find out more about Julie and her work at juliephillipshatch.com. That's J-U-L-I-E-P-H-I-L-L-I-P-S. H-A-T-C-H, juliephillipshatch.com. There's a free introductory call available to you there and tons of other information on her website, juliephillipshatch.com. And you know you're always welcome at karenhager.com. That's a great place to find out about upcoming classes and events. You can even book a private intuitive session with me there if you're so inclined. Please do follow Fog City Psychic on Instagram and don't hesitate to email me with your feedback about what you heard today. Or maybe you know someone who'd be a great guest on the show. My inbox is open at karen at karenhager.com. And thank you for listening today. Together we are spreading a little more light in the world. And a little more light is always a good thing. Until next time, I'm wishing you peace.